All right, here it is. It's time for another edition of the Coach Chenisberry Show with Coach Chenisberry yes. and yours truly, Curtis Wilson. Big shouts, big thanks to Prisma Health for being the title sponsor of the show. Thank you, Prisma Health. We appreciate you, no doubt about that. Of course, also on board, Lexington Medical Center. We'll have a spotlight with them. And then how about this? We got the South Carolina Education Lottery, longtime supporters of Better to College Athletics. And we say thank you so much. We really do. All right, Coach, I guess you know the field wasn't conducive to what Benedict is usually used to playing on over at Lane. I mean, you know, let's face it, those who were at the game, you saw it, what, how it was. Those, of course, who were going to watch this game footage, going to see how it was. It was sloppy. It was horrible. Uh, it just was not a safe condition for your players. Absolutely, man. First of all, we're grateful to be 1-0. Mm -hmm. You know, our mission every week is to be 1-0. But the reality is, uh, though that field definitely wasn't conducive to playing a football game. It really was unsafe. Right. So, you know, we had to talk before the game, myself and the head coach for Lane, and we, we got with the head official, and we really talked about the opportunity of not playing the game. But, mm -hmm. you know, we decided to go in to play the game. Our guys were chopping at the bit, ready to go. Mm -hmm. uh, just the field conditions really made it a challenge for both teams to be able to uh, – execute in terms of the way we needed to because not only was it wet and muggy and, and, and muddy, mm -hmm. it was, uh, you know, just not safe because of the holes in the field. So it really could have injured a player for a long term. So uh, we we're grateful again to come back 1-0. But again, those field uh, conditions made it really, really tough for both, both teams. Now, for those of you who are shouting, say it's 2-0, coach, you 2-0. Coach, after every game, says we're 1-0. This way keeps the frame of mind for these players to know each game is a separate game. Go after this one like you have the next one coming up. As well. Absolutely, 1-0. The mission, we have a mission. We don't set goals. Mm -hmm. We set missions. There it is. And every week, our mission is to be 1-0. They're 2-0. Okay, let's get to this one right here, Coach. We're talking about 11 turnovers in this game. Uh, let's see. Benedict had three fumbles. Lane had six fumbles. I mean, was it the conditions? Was it the rain? What was it? It was a mixture of the rain. I mean, it rained continuously the whole game, but right. it rained on both sides. So I tell our guys, don't make any excuses, no explanation. Right. But it made it a challenge because not only was it raining, the field, uh, the grass was really high, mm -hmm. and it was really muggy and soggy in most areas, and the ball was rolled in the mud. So it made it a challenge to be able to pass the football because mm -hmm. obviously the ball wasn't only heavy because of the rain, the ball was muddy and wet and slippery to be able to pass the ball. And then for, for a skill position to be able to hold on the ball mm -hmm. is a challenge as well. So sure. it, it was definitely a challenge for both teams. But we found a way ultimately at the end of the day to be 1-0. and So we're happy. All right. Great defensive effort. Uh, against a very good Lane Dragon football team. Not only that, the defense held Lane to just 92 yards of total offense. Some of that may have been weather conditions, but nonetheless still a great defensive stand for your Tigers. Man, listen, man. Our defense, it was a challenge all offseason because they heard the noise and things of that nature. Um, but, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, our defense played lights out in practice all week. Mm -hmm. You know, they had a great mental focus practice all week, every week, every day we practice, and I knew they were going to play well. I told them in one of our team meetings last week, I said, you guys are going to play lights out. Why? Because their level of focus that week was second to none. And I'm so excited to see Coach O'Daffer and the defensive staff, as well as all our defense players, just benefit from the fruits of their labor because they really play really, really lights out. They put us in great situations offensively to be able to get touchdowns because they created a lot of turnovers. I mean, they stopped the run. They stopped the pass. They created turnovers. And I couldn't ask for a better effort from our defense because they really, really play, again, lights out. All right, let's go ahead and recap the game. Lane gets the ball to get the kickoff, and they're actually moving this ball down the field, but then it stops. I tell you what, man, it, this, was, this was big. So, you know, we, def we won the toss, and we deferred to the second half. So, again, Lane got a chance to start their drive, and they were moving the ball a little bit. And, uh, you know, we had a big stop, mm -hmm. uh, big interception by Giovanni Melador, man, who gave us the opportunity to get the ball on offense. And then, you know, we took the ball down the field. I mean, I know the weather was the weather, but – you know, we were able to execute our offense and took it all the way down the field. So we were in the red zone, and it was a fourth and one situation. Mm -hmm. and we actually yard line. Yeah, and we actually converted on the fourth and one. But once our running back, uh, he did a good job, man, Zaire Scotland. He hit the hole for probably about an eight to ten yard run, and then he took a spin. Of course, the ball was slippery, and they hit him right on the ball. Fumble Benedict. They get the ball back. All right, so here it is. Lane gets the ball back, and uh, Gerard Kilpatrick, KP, he forces the fumble. We get the ball. We drive down to the 36-yard line, but then that's where it stops right there. That ends the first quarter. 0-0 uh, score, uh, interception, two fumbles, and that's what happened on the 
the game's first three drives. Tell you what, at this point, it's a defensive battle. You know, like I say, it was a challenge for both offenses to be able to generate much offense. Uh, but I'll tell you what, I can only give, uh, take my hats off to our defense because at this point, they're playing, they're playing some ball right now. Yeah. So in the second quarter, we get a, a couple of punts in the first couple of drives, and then you get another fumble. Luper Denalis, he forces that fumble, and John Hannibal recovers it. We get it at the lane 31-yard line. And we were moving it again, man. We had an opportunity to move it. We, we were facing second and one, and then we had a negative play that put us in a, a fourth down situation. And we went for it on fourth down. I just felt like at this point our defense was playing really good ball. And, uh, you know, I just liked our chances. So we went for it on fourth and six, and we ended up coming a yard short. We caught the reception, actually, uh, but we were a yard short. So we got five yards instead of six. So we had to turn over on downs. So after the stop, we get the ball back, and uh, we end up on the lane 12-yard line. Man, listen, man, at this point, offensively, as an offensive coach, you have to try to find some way to generate some points because we knew it was going to be a challenge for either offense going forward to be able to score. So we got in great field position, and we took it down. We got the ball, which we thought still, regardless of the conditions, we should be able to, you know, get it between the uprights. And we kicked uh, – Davis Roger kicked the short field goal, but he hooked it wide right just because once he stepped his plant foot in the mud, yeah. his foot went one way ball went another way so it made it a challenge for us as well so we go in zero zero and that's what happens that's the half right there and that's how that ends but of course we get set for that second half but before we get there let's talk about this first half in the battle in the mud it was it was a challenge man I'm gonna be honest with you man it was just a challenge uh, our guys their effort and their energy they're such a resilient group man our, their effort and energy they were so fired up and ready to go for this football game you figure man we challenge we travel about 11, 12 hours, man. Mm. I mean, it was a long trip, so they wanted to be able to get some out of it, and they felt really, really good about uh, playing against that lane team. And, uh, you know, I was just excited about them. So, you know, first half was what it was, you know. But both teams had its challenges. We both had to play on it. But, uh, you know, our kids had a great attitude coming into halftime. They knew that every possession mattered. And we, had to, we knew that in the second half that we were getting the ball first. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to try to motivate our guys to be able to generate uh, some points because we knew – once we go up, it was going to be a challenge for any offense to be able to maintain any positive drives going forward. Yeah. You know, and what you talked on, talked about the fact of, you know, it was that way for both teams mm -hmm. in the mud. And mm -hmm. you talk about Lane, who actually plays on this field, they had the mm -hmm. upper hand, but <laughs> Benedict held with them in spite of that. Absolutely, man. Our kids were awesome. They were awesome, man. I was really proud of our young men and their efforts on uh, Saturday to come away with the, with the victory. All right, we'll come back with the second half right after this. Prisma Health keeps South Carolina hearts beating strong. As the largest cardiovascular provider in the state and home to the only freestanding heart hospital dedicated to the prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of heart disease, we provide the heart care you need. With more innovative treatments like LVAD, more specialists, and more locations closer to you, we're doing even more to help you <laughs> be your healthiest you. Prisma Health, the heart and vascular experts. I want to welcome you back to the Coach Chennis Berry Show, brought to you by Prisma Health, and we appreciate you watching and supporting better to college football at its best. All right, Coach, so let's get into the second half. We get the ball back, a couple of stalls, take it from there. And listen, man, we, we got the ball. We were actually taking it down. We had a nice little drive going, and uh, we were down, and we had to go for it again on fourth down. So we, we called our quarterback's number to try to get generate some kind of positivity, and we ran it for, went for it on fourth and one. And we came up short again, so now our defense has to play. Um, they got the ball on the minus six yard line. They had to come out, and that's when our defense really turned it up. Jerron Kilpatrick forces another fumble, and again, big Lupe Denales recovers it in the end zone, and that's what a touchdown. 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 We had to generate points the best way we knew how, and our defense stood up, was able to get a couple big stops. Man, we thought we had a safety to play before, and it was maybe on the inch yard line the very next play. We got a chance to put that ball in the end zone, so we're up now. It's 7-0. All right, so Lane gets the ball, get the kickoff, but their drive only lasts one play because we get a great interception. Elijah Smith intercepts their QB, Michael Huntley, on that first play. Then we take that ball all the way to midfield, Coach. <laughs> this man. First of all, O.J., my main man. O.J. had a great week of practice. He played lights out. I mean, he had a really, really good game as well as our entire defense. But just, you know, for us to get that turnover, it was big, man. It, it was a challenge just for both offenses, man. I mean, it really was. And kudos out to our defense. They 
I won't take anything away from them because they were mentally ready to play and they were physical. They were they all physical that team. I mean, we lived in their backfield. We always talk about the three P's. Penetration produces problems. And our D-line lived in their backfield. And uh, But just offensively, man, you know, that ball, it was tough to hold on to. You know, and we knew that their quarterback, you know, was a pretty good passer, man. He did a good job the week before when they played UAPB. He threw for like 300 almost 350 yards, so wow. we knew it would be a challenge. But he was a smaller guy, so I'm sure he really couldn't hold the football. And then for us, you know, we have two bigger quarterbacks. They're both 6'3", with bigger hands, and they even had challenges, you know, holding on to that football as well, but just because it was so heavy and so muddy. But, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, like I say, man, our, our defense, man, I, I, I tell you what, regardless of the weather, I mean, I just really think that they, they play lights out and they had, they had a key to what they were trying to do de- offensively. And, uh, you know, I, I just want to show, show praise and shout out to our defense for playing a really, really good football game. That's a good thing. So on this drive, it's short-lived for us as well because we get a fumble <laughs> as well yep. and we turn it over and give it back to Lane. But we hold the Dragons and they have to punt as well. Now, on this punt, special teams came up big for better than college with that one. On a block punt, we take over again with some great field position. Well, we we get a nice pass from John Lampley to Rashawn McCain. We actually scored, man. Uh, We were able to put that ball in the box, which was a challenge in itself. And we felt like at that point, we would have got a chance to go up 14-0, which would have really gave us a chance. But on that pass from John Lampley to McCain, man, they ended up calling us for holding on our left tackle, and uh, that nullified that. So, you know, we got an opportunity to kick a field goal, man, and they actually blocked it. I mean, it was just tough conditions. They blocked the field goal, and uh, I didn't want a chance to field goal uh, getting blocked again because they actually had an offsides penalty there, so we got an opportunity again on fourth down. But we went forward, and again, another challenge. We had a ball that was passed to us, but it was just a little bit went through our hands because of the mud. So, again, our defense has to come back on the field. All right, Benedict and Lane, we're going back and forth, putting the ball uh, and and score still. 7-zip Benedict right here. Then we get another opportunity. We get close again to the Dragons' 18-yard line. But again, that opportunity ends with a fumble, Coach. Man, we were running that ball, too. We knew at this time we wanted to work some clock. And we were running the ball, and our our running back, Zaire Scotland, was getting positive yards. And we had a play where we had a big gain into into our left sideline. And then the very next play, we ran that same play again. And... So I heard fumble, fumbled again, man. So we end up giving it back to them. So now it's like a seesaw battle. Now in a game like this, I mean, when you, you know, you, you play as fumble or something like that, I know sometimes they have to do all these push-ups and things of that nature, but with the field conditions, did you let it slide or do they still have to pay that penalty in practice? Well, we never let it slide. You know, that, that's, uh, he probably received a really, really evil look at from me uh, when he came to the sideline. But I knew it was going to be a challenge, man. He, all our guys, they took all their gloves off. They tried to take their tape off. Just something where they can maintain some traction. And like I say, for both teams, I won't make any excuses, any explanation for how we performed offensively, but it was going to be a challenge for anybody. I don't care if the Houston Texans or the uh, Atlanta Falcons or the Dallas Cowboys would have played in those kind of conditions. It was just tough yeah. for offenses to be able to hold on to that football. Yeah. Here we go, Coach. We're talking about punting this ball back and forth, back and forth between uh, Benedict College and Lane as well. Then we get another punt where uh, Taven Grice actually recovers this fumble to give Benedict some more uh, momentum. Tell you what, man, I, I, I was super excited about our special teams unit. I mean, not only did our defense play lights out, we always talk about three phases of the game, but our special teams play lights out as well. They generated some turnovers as well, man. And they, I tell you what, our punter, Jared Eubanks, he was phenomenal. Honestly, in terms of our punting, although we had to punt quite a bit, I mean, he pent them inside the 20-yard line at least at least four or five times. So, you know, we were, we were playing really, really good ball on special teams. We were making great hits, uh, making them turn over the football. And uh, I'm really, really proud of our special teams. And we always talk about winning the field position battle. And there's no doubt about it, we won the field position battle because of the efforts of our special teams and our special teams coordinator, Coach Kevin King. All right, Coach, Tigers take over uh, at the seven-yard line, and we just uh, needed, what, two rushes to get this thing done? Man, we had a chance to bring our big back in. Mm-hmm. So DeAndre Duhart, uh, number 21, man, he, we put it in his hand, and we went two rushes, and he was able to take it on left, inside zone to the left, and he was able to put it in the box now. You know, we go for the extra point. Davis Rogers gets it through the uprights. We're up 14 nothing, and we're feeling really, really good at this point. All right, so the Dragons, they go ahead and put together a drive as well, but it's a short drive. And how does it end? You guessed it. Another fumble happens <laughs> yeah, on this one. Absolutely, man. I'll tell you what, it was, 
it was a beautiful thing at this point. You know, we're going to put our offense back on the field, and we're going to run a couple plays just to work the clock. You know, I know they had timeouts left, but we, still, we just wanted to run the football, run the clock out, and get into the best play in football, which is what I call the victory formation. So we were able to finish it off with victory, run the clock out. We're, we win the football game 14 nothing. And again, the mission every week is to be one and all. We was able to accomplish that. Although, you know, our team faced a lot of adversity uh, from the whole entire trip, you know, but ultimately at the end of the day, we found a way. And, uh, you know, I tell our young men, just stay resilient through it all. Control the controllables. And we found a way to come back one and all. There it is, 14-0. That's how that one ends uh, against the Lane College Dragons. Now we're going to look forward to the next game, which comes up this Thursday. It's going to be against Savannah State, and as you know, it's at home at Charlie W. Johnson Stadium. And also, I hope you do know, it's a televised game, which means we need all of Benedict College fans to come on out to that stadium, and let's fill it up because it's going to be televised on ESPNU. So I'll get you some more information about that. Right now, what we're going to do is take another break, and we're going to come back with our coaches spotlight and also our player two. This is all brought to you by Prisma Health. Also, again, want to give big shouts to uh, Lexington Medical Center as well as uh, South Carolina Education Lottery. You're watching the Coach Chenna Sperry Show. Whether it's a bad kick, nagging back pain, or a hip that has you hobbling, nothing matters more than getting you back to feeling your best. As South Carolina's most preferred orthopedic provider and official team doctors for the Tigers and Gamecocks, Prisma Health provides all the care you need. With more expertise, more technology, and more locations closer to you, we're doing even more to help you be your healthiest you. Prisma Health, the orthopedic experts. All right, welcome back to the Coach Jenis Berry Show. It is now time for the Lexington Medical Center Coach Spotlight. And we have Coach Odaffer, Jordan Odaffer, defense coach, right? Yes, sir. You got to play defense, you're going to be tough. You got to do it like that, Coach. Uh, uh, got to okay, coach fact. him up a little bit. <laughs> Matter of fact, Coach knows all about it because he went to HBCU. You went to FAMU? Yes, sir. 2008 graduate. And you played too, didn't you? Yes, sir. What position? I played linebacker. When I got there, I played some safety before that and okay. my first year in college. I played um, left out when I... No. <laughs> Let's get to this, Coach. Coach, listen, we have you here because of the fact that your defense is doing some great things. You are creating magic when we talk about Tigers and the defense? Well, I mean, I'm going to be honest. You know, we have great leadership from the top. Coach Barry, every week he's on us about, hey, what are we doing? What are they looking like? He's obviously has a great offensive mind. He helps us with putting a couple things together. Then staff-wise, I mean, I can't thank Coach Kevin King, Coach Michael Styers, Coach Gary Howard, or uh, our student assistant, Xavier Marcells. I can't thank those guys enough for all the work that they put in. And let's be honest, it comes down to players. The guys are playing hard. They're getting after it. They're chasing the ball. They're forcing things to happen. And we couldn't be happier with the effort that they're giving us. And we need that just to keep happening on a weekly basis. Well, you know, that's great too, but also you got to have a defensive mind. You got to be able to watch what these offenses are doing out there on these other teams and be able to create the magic that's going to put a stop to what they're trying to do. Yes, sir. I mean, I'm, I'm fortunate because, again, I got brought up by some good guys in the game. They taught me a lot along the way. But still, it, it comes down to if you if you don't have much eyes on stuff from up there in the press box, mm -hmm. you know it's hard if you don't know exactly what's going on out there to fix stuff, and that's that's a huge thing. Coach Styles doing an amazing job up there in the box for us. He's getting us, hey, coach, it's, it's looking like this to the field because it's hard to see the far side of the oh, field. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's tough. So we get those things answered, and then obviously, you know, like I said, my guys they do a great job, and then even the boys as they've gotten. Our young men, as they've gotten further into the game, they know more and more football there. They bring us more good intel from the field, and we can help to fix things on the fly. Do you see the game uh, becoming faster and faster on the fly? Because when you talk about football, you talk about things are happening really quick. Oh, yeah. And that's one thing. Last week, we prepared a lot for a lot of tempo and a lot of up-tempo, just fast, 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 no huddle, at mm -hmm. the ball, checking, calling. So we had things in place. But the one thing that you can do to slow all that down, and the good Lord helped us a little bit because he made it a – a wet surface and it, it made it harder to get big plays because people want to go tempo behind big plays. Yeah. But if you don't have a big play, you need a good play. So then you have to slow down and call things a little slower so it was able to really, it, it hampers offenses at times if they're not able to lock you into calls. And But our guys do an amazing job. Again, you know, the coaching staff starts with it. We have savvy players on the back end that help us a lot with formational checks and assignments and things that our guys need to do. Mm -hmm. So I just can't give enough credit to our guys. Everyone from, like I said, coaches, players, everyone, they do an amazing job. All right. So I know you're a family man. You also have kids too as well. But what do you like to do in your downtime? 
I'll be honest, in my downtime, all I want to do is spend time with my family. Yeah. You know, my, my wife and two beautiful kids, they're still down in Lakeland, Florida, working on getting everybody moved up. So whatever time we get, I'm all theirs. There you, go. you know, I mean, there's there's not a lot of time for other than that. You got to be a good husband, father, and and just take care of business. All right, Coach Jordan O'Daffer, thank you so much. Appreciate you having me. Lexington there. Medical Center, Coach Spotlight right here. At Lexington Medical Center, we want you to lead a long and healthy life, and we're here to help you do just that. Our experienced team of healthcare professionals wants nothing more than to help make you well again. Take good care of yourself, and remember, we're here for you whenever you need us. If you don't already have a doctor or you're looking for a new one, choose from more than 70 physician practices at Lexington Medical Center. We wish you a lifetime of good health and happiness. Be well. Welcome back to the Coach Chenis Berry Show. It is time for our South Carolina Education Lottery Player Spotlight, and we have Jerron Kilpatrick with us. What's up, money? What's up? This guy right here plays defense, plays nickel. But not only that, you can put him in any position on defense. He's got you covered, no doubt about that. But hold up, before we get to the game, let's talk about you academically. 4.0, leadership council. Not only that, but it's like this trophy that they give out. It's like the, the, the Heisman for academics and football at the same time combined together. It is the William Campbell Trophy. You're nominated for that, too. Yes, sir. Dude, you're doing it all. I'm trying to. What's your major? My major is sports management. What do you want to do? Um, I really want to go to the league, play mm -hmm. football. But if that don't really work out, I think I'll be a coach mm -hmm. just because all my coaches that I ever had in life, they, they mean a lot to me. They're kind of like a, another father figure in my right. life as they just give me advice on a lot of things outside of football. It's right. helping me be a man. You know, he's doing his thing. I'm telling 4.0 and the leader on the football field as well, playing defense. Uh, where are you from, actually? I'm from Polk County, Florida. Florida? Yes, sir. What made you decide to come to Benedict? Coach Odafa, and then just talking on the phone with Coach King and Coach Barry and getting to know the coaches, and just it just feels like a family. Right, right, right. Yes, sir. Defense is what you love. Defense is what you do. Tell me, tell me what it is about football that, that just drove you to it. I really like football because it's physical. That's, that's my main thing. <laughs> and academics. I mean, you're always in these books and so forth. And, and you're a leader, like I said, not just in the classroom, but also on the field. You're just doing this thing. That's got to make you feel good. Yes, sir. Um, that's one of my main things growing up. My mama always told me, get an education. Mm -hmm. And then get it for free if you can. Right. So that's my main thing, trying to get my education. And I always tell my young guys back at home, my young guys as teammates, education is very important. You had a great game against uh, Lane. Yes, sir. Now you're getting ready for Savannah State on Thursday. Yes, sir. What are you looking forward to doing on this one? Uh, we're looking for defense just to come out as a whole, and we're going to play as one. And we're looking for our offense to put up a lot of points. You know, I, you know, I got to say, Coach has made this like a family for real. Yes, I mean, sir. you know, not just with the coaches being like the, the, the parent figures, but also the players like your brothers. Yes, sir. So everybody on the team, we, we all like brothers because it – we go by this thing called family, and it's forget about me, I love you. Yeah. So you got to forget about yourself and you love everybody else, and that's really what we do as a team. Jerron Kilpatrick, Spotlight, South Carolina Education Lottery. Watch him. He's out there on that field. Yes, He'll be all over the place. You might need a, um, glasses. Catch him. <laughs> <laughs> Back with more of the Coach Jenny Berry Show right after this. Think big. Something life-changing. I'm talking education. Let's get inventive. Blow things up in a good way. Do it for 20 years? Wake up and education has received billions in funding. Who does all this? If you've ever played one of these or these, that would be you. Yeah, thank you. Welcome back to the Coach Chenis Berry Show. As we look ahead to this game on Thursday, as you know, we need you there. You can grab your tickets at benedicttickets.com. Benedicttickets.com. Thank you much on that one. And, uh, of course, you can even just get them at the box office. Come to the athletics office. Come to the stadium. Dennis, he's always there and ready to help you. He's got that big smile. You need tickets? How many? <laughs> We're going to make this thing happen. We Absolutely. need you there. Charlie W. Johnson. Pack out the this jungle, game. man. Let's I'm go. I'm telling you. We need the jungle packed out. Savannah State, 7.30, and uh, it's going to be on ESPNU, but it's nothing better than being under those bright lights at night for a big game with your Tigers. Coach, what does this game mean to you that it's going to be televised? Well, you know, anytime we get an opportunity to not only showcase our program, but showcase our college, you know, to be able to show what's all good about Benedict College and show our fans and show our stadium and just, it's a recruiting tool, you know, no question about it, man. They have young men to have an opportunity to play 
uh, on national TV for their parents that can't make it or their family members that can't make it to be able to cut the TV on and be able to watch their sons uh, play this great game of football. And then, you know, just to be able to, in the community, to be able to show that what we have. I mean, I think we have top 10 stadium in all of Division Two to be able to showcase that. That helps us going forward with recruiting and then morale of our players. They know they get opportunity to play on national TV. They want to show the world what Benedict Tiger football is all about. So we're super excited. Our young men are chopping at the bit. But more than anything, man, we got to fill up Charlie Johnson Stadium, man. Absolutely. You know, we want to fill it up. We want to put people in the seats. And, you know, we're excited. Our young men are excited. We're ready to have a great week of practice. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, our young men will be locked in and be ready to go. So what do you know about Savannah State? Tell you what, they're, they're, they're a well-coached football team. They play hard. Uh, they have a new head football coach, Coach Kelton. Uh, this is his first season there, and they're right now they're one and one. They lost their opener to Southeastern University out of Florida, and then they won their last game, 31-28 versus Edward Waters. So they're coming in with a little momentum. They're feeling good, uh, you know. But our guys will be ready to go, man. Our guys are ready to uh, for the challenge. You know, every week we just want to be one and zero, oh, and uh, we'll practice this week and uh, get ready for a good Savannah State football team that will be coming into Charlie Johnson Stadium. And it's a conference game for Benedict as well, so it makes it even more important. Absolutely. You know, and like all games, you know, every game's important, but this is our next game, so that's why it's more important. But we want an opportunity to go 1-0. and We're not going to talk about last year when we played him. We're talking about this year and being 1-0 and against this guy right here, even though we're 2-0 right now. But I'm just saying, Coach, every every game, we're 1-0. and Every game, we're 1-0. We're right. going to make this thing happen. That's right. uh, defensively, do you think they're going to pose a challenge? Yes, they, they, they put some points on the board. Yeah, they, they, they do a good job on defense. They run around, they fly to the football, they play with amazing effort. You know, our offensive guys have been doing some really good things as well. We know last week was a challenge, but, you know, we have some players on offense. We, we feel like we're really good on offensive line. We, we have two very, very talented quarterbacks. We have some receivers that can stretch the field vertically. We have some tight ends that can make it happen in the run game and in the passing game. And we have some backs that can dot the eye and cross the T. So we like our chances. We like our talent. We like our personnel. You know, it's going to be a – be a, a great game on this upcoming Thursday night. All right, Thursday night, 7.30, Charlie W. Johnson Stadium. BenedictTickets.com is where you can grab those tickets or come to the box office, but make sure you're there. We need to pack it out, televised game, and there's no better place to be on a Thursday night than watching your Benedict College Tigers play some ball. It's going to be an awesome night. Excellent. Coach. Let's do it. We thank you. Prisma Health, we thank you, too, for being a title sponsor of the Coach Janice Berry Show. We also want to say thank you to Lexington Medical Center as well as the South Carolina Education Lottery. And as always, thank you for watching and supporting Benedict College Football. Go Tigers!